Every four years, the Olympic Games come around to bring the global community together in unity to enjoy watching the best athletes our countries have to offer. The countries that win the bid to host the epic sporting event build amazing venues, stadiums, arenas, courses, villages, and housing throughout their cities to accommodate the Olympic Games. But when the Games are over, a lot, and I mean a lot of those facilities, of those great facilities, wind up becoming abandoned. <laughs> In this video, I'll be talking about the massive Olympic BMX racing facilities and what their current status is. Are any still around? And if they're around, are they still open? Are they functioning? Or are they abandoned? Dun, dun, dun. Let me get into that right now. Now, back in 2008, BMX racing finally became an Olympic sport and it made its big debut in Beijing. This led to the creation of the amazing Laoshan Bicycle Motocross Track. It was one of the nine temporary venues used for the Summer Olympics in 2008. And it was an amazing course that had big, deep rollers, huge doubles, massive berms. The Beijing track was one of the first BMX racing tracks that had the men's pro side on the second street jump over the women's berm on the second straight if i'm not mistaken like correct me if i'm wrong if you guys know if there was other tracks i mean i know there were the replica tracks that replicated the beijing track but i don't know if there was any tracks that actually uh had jumps that went over the berm pre Beijing. So let me know in the comments if you know any better than I do. This track made for some amazing racing action. But not too long after the Beijing Games, the track started to get neglected and was falling into disrepair. In 2013, the stadium was actually being rented out to an automobile sales company, which is which is crazy. Anyway, since then the track hasn't been taken care of at all. These days, a relic of what once was a great BMX track is what you'll see there. It's now overgrown with grass, vines, and small trees. Only glimpses of what was can be seen, like the cracked asphalt berms and the finish line truss, which is slowly getting consumed with some vegetation. So from what I can find online, there's absolutely no plans on restoring this track. So it's just going to sit there and lay to waste. And it's crazy because, you know, Beijing was the first track that BMX Racing was debuted on. And it would have been cool if it was still around and functional for people to enjoy and also to pay respect to a once great track. So you know what I'm going to do right now? What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pay my respects to the Beijing track, the 2008 Beijing track. But I'm not going to pour a drink out to remember this track because it's going to make a mess on the floor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let some air out my inner tube to pay respect to the Beijing track 2008. Pay respect to the homie 2008 Beijing track. I got my Skyway here, 24 inch, and I'm going to let it out. And that's for you, Beijing track gonna remember you by letting out that air from our tires to pay respect to the Beijing track. That's right. Now the 2012 Olympic BMX track in London was pretty unique. This time in the second straight on the men's side, they had a shark fin style jump that went over the women's line. They also added a short straight in order to get around the women's berm so they can connect to the third straight. Now the second straight for the women was also unique because they had a drop where the men's line cut across at. So it was basically like an over under type of straight for the men and women, which was pretty cool. They didn't do it at the same time, but it was cool to have some different variety in those straights. I think this second straight layout was inspired by the Red Bull Revolution track, which was getting a lot of hype at the time. It was a crazy track that had like huge jumps, huge gaps, and just crazy stuff going on with it. And I think they wanted to add some of those elements to the Olympic track to spice it up. These days, the London track is doing pretty good. I mean, you know, just after the Olympics, it was a little bit controversial because it was abandoned, kind of abandoned after the Olympics happened. It lay dormant for about a year and a half after the Olympics, but it was reconstructed and currently it's open and active as part of Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, AKA Lee Valley Velo Park. The Olympic Legacy BMX track was modified after the games into a scaled down version of the original. And it's now a year round venue, which is located next to the velodrome north of the Olympic Park. And it was repurposed for public use after the Olympic games. So the revamped London Olympic BMX racing track has been going strong for over 10 years now and there's even a website where you can check out all the information and hours and details about the track and it's also been expanded now that whole place has been expanded to a cycling mecca the place includes track cycling road racing BMX and mountain biking facilities you see 
Now, that's what I'm talking about. That's how you do it. You know, you build these great facilities, these great Olympic facilities. You don't let them fall apart. You cultivate them, maintain them, and usher in a new generation of Olympic hopefuls that wish to qualify for the Games, while also promoting the sport. So big shout out to London for keeping that track going and making it happen and being a great example to the rest of the world on how you can make these things work after the Olympics. And then there was the 2016 Rio Olympic BMX track. This one was actually my favorite track aesthetically out of all the BMX racing tracks of the Olympics. I was loving the way the green berms look. It really had a style of its own. The huge men's double over the women's berm on the second straight made its return and the lip was looking crazy, looked real lippy. It was wild. This track was wild. And what was even wilder than that was the third straight had this crazy step up. I mean, this thing looked like it came out of excite bike it was huge now none of the pros wanted to jump that thing there was a whole controversy about that the pros was protesting they wanted them to tame that thing down because it was crazy tall and dangerous but i think there was maybe one or two pros that actually jumped it somebody knows out there i'm pretty sure somebody watching this knows who the pros were that actually jumped that jump but there's only a few I'm, I'm pretty sure it was like one or two riders that actually jumped that huge thing when it was at its full size. But they eventually worked it out, they tamed it down so it could be ready for race day and some amazing racing went down on that track. However, after the Olympics, the track faced a series of issues. Maintenance was inconsistent and the track fell into disrepair. In 2017, the venue was repurposed for other events and its condition continued to deteriorate. By 2019, the track was no longer in use for major competitions and its infrastructure was in poor state. Efforts to rehabilitate or repurpose the track have been limited and the BMX facility has not been a focal point in post-Olympic legacy planning in Rio. That's basically the general trend for many Olympic venues is they face a mix of maintenance challenges and reconfiguration and that BMX track in Rio was definitely a case in point. But in light of the 2024 Paris Olympics and all the hype, it's official. The Rio track will be getting restored. It's a huge project, which includes restoring the dilapidated big starting hill, infield, and of course the jumps and berms. The project is being carried out with the supervision of national and international BMX expert Christian Benigni. Benigni. I can't pronounce his last name. And the restoration has already begun. Bike.radio on Instagram has been posting a bunch of videos of the progress and they said the restoration service is bringing back the world-class Olympic BMX track and even better with the second starting gate innovating and providing accessibility for all categories. Now watching the clips of the restore on Instagram you can see it looks like they're covering the whole infield and sides of the features with concrete which is pretty interesting. So basically if you have to bail or get run off the track during a the race, there won't be any soft grass on the sides to land on. Also, those are some serious drops in between the straights. Like it's really far down, but I'm pretty sure they'll be covering it with some super thick turf to soften the blow. At least I hope they are. I also hope to keep the berms, the lips, the starting hill green when they restore them. That's what really made this track stick out. There are no other BMX tracks that have green berms and starting hill and stuff like that. It just really is a, a cool aesthetic, a cool look for the track. So there were no completion dates that were announced, but looking at those IG videos, the track looks like it could possibly be ready before the end of the year. That's pretty exciting news. I just love that they're restoring the great Rio track and I'm looking forward to seeing the completed project and possibly heading down to Rio and getting some laps and on the track with the green berms you know what I'm saying ride them green berms yo <laughs> okay so the Rio track is getting restored but what about the 2020 Tokyo track what's going on with the 2020 Tokyo track so you ready for this? You ready for this? The 2020 Tokyo Olympic BMX racing track is demolished ever since the event ended. That's right. No more Tokyo track. It's gone. It's not abandoned. It's not forgotten. It's just gone. Wiped out. Done. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta put more air in my tire to let more air out the tire to pay respect to Tokyo. Ugh.
That's for you, Tokyo. So that leaves us with the 2024 Paris BMX Stadium. Now, this track was originally built at the same time as the San Quentin Velodrome between 2011 and 2014, but it was redesigned and specifically laid out for Paris 2024. One of the standout features of this track is it is fully covered. That's right, this is a fully covered track. So in case it rains or anything, track is good. As a matter of fact, during the event, it did rain. So luckily they did have it covered or else that would have been problems during the broadcast of the Olympics. This track is actually open to the public and is open for all skill levels, which makes it a very valuable facility for not only the Paris region, but also the whole country. Now the bleachers at the track were temporarily set up for the games. And of course there were other facilities that were set up for staging the games and those will soon disappear if they haven't already. But the BMX track will continue to welcome riders of all ages. Yeah! That is right. The track will continue to contribute to the San Quentin Velodrome Sports Complex's day-to-day -day activities. And that is great news. This track will be open every day for people to ride and enjoy and practice. And man, I wish we had some more tracks like that in the States that are open every day. You know, just having them open for a couple of hours on the weekend is like, come on, man. Let's have them open for the whole day. That'd be great. But that is a discussion for a whole nother video. So as far as abandoned Olympic facilities go, BMX Olympic racing tracks aren't doing so bad. I mean, there's crazy other sport venues that have been abandoned and falling apart throughout the years. But on the BMX side, we just have the abandoned Beijing track and the demolished Tokyo track. And since the Tokyo track is demolished, it really doesn't count. It's not really abandoned, it's just gone. But the London track is flourishing well after the Olympics. The Paris track has been there and will be there after the Olympics and continue to do their thing. And the soon to be rebuilt and refurbished Rio track will be flourishing after it gets built and reopens its doors. So that's three out of five BMX tracks. That's what's up. And you know what? You never know. Maybe Beijing, maybe, you know, it's still there. It's just under a bunch of trees and vegetation and stuff. So there may be a chance that that track might get restored. You never know. It's just sitting there waiting. We'll find out in the near future. Hopefully there's enough hype with this next Olympics coming that they might decide to do that. So that'll be a good thing. So that is the current status of all the BMX racing tracks that were used in the Olympics. Which track out of all the Olympic tracks were your favorite? Also, what features would you like to see in the 2028 Olympic BMX track? Definitely want to hear what you guys say about that. And if you're a pro who's watching this that actually attended some of these Olympic races, which one of those tracks were your favorites? You know, there's a couple of riders out there who attended several Olympics, you know, so I want to definitely find out what your opinion is of the tracks that you raced. That would be cool to get some insight from the actual pros that actually rode the track. So that's pretty much it. This is Crazy Al Kane. Make sure you like and subscribe the whole nine yards. Come check out my shop on sugarcane.com. I got some shirts that I made. Also got some BMX frames and would love your support on that. All right, so that's it. It's Crazy Alkane, shitkin.com, CAC TV, and I'm out. Back to you, Billy.